Hi friends, my name is Jess. Welcome or welcome back to Books Past Bedtime. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. Now February was a bit of a slow reading month for me. I didn't read nearly as much as I wanted to, but that's okay. I'm trying to be nice to myself. <laughs> You know how that is. Anyway, let's just jump right into my monthly overview and stats. So I did read nine books in February and those nine books added up to a total of 3,069 pages. I also listened to about 40 and a half hours of audiobooks in February. My average rating this month was a 3.5. I acquired six books and read zero of them, I believe. Actually, I did read The X Talk, which I bought on Audible. So <laughs> read one of five or of six. And then I also read three books that could be considered own voices stories in some capacity. Breaking down my genres, I read four contemporaries, one historical, one mystery, two romance books, and one sci-fi. In terms of format, I listened to five audiobooks, read three ebooks, and read only one physical book. In terms of audience, I read six adult books and three YA, and nothing in between. <laughs> in terms of author identity, I read three books by authors who use he, him pronouns, five books by authors who use she, her pronouns, and one by an author that was anonymous so I don't know. And then the race of my authors this month, I read from three black authors, five white authors, and one author who again was anonymous so I don't know their race. In terms of author status, I had only read one author before this month and that was Matt Haig. The other authors were all new to me. In terms of star ratings, again I had a 3.25 average rating for the month which is kind of low but I did have two books that I rated four and a half stars, one book that I gave four stars, two books that I gave three and a half stars, one book that that I gave three stars, two books that I gave one and a half stars, and one book that I actually DNF'd. First DNF of the year. <laughs> So let's just jump right into talking about these books. I am going to, as I've been doing for the past couple of months, go from my least favorite up to my favorite. So we are ending on a positive note, but let's just jump right in first with the DNF. And the book that I DNF'd this month was The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. This was the book that we were planning to read for the Page Turner Book Club in February, but we ended up just doing a trivia night instead. It was a lot of fun. If you want to watch it, I'll link it above. It was a lot more fun, honestly, than discussing this book because I was now vibing with this book <laughs> when Mary and Katie met messaged me and were like, we don't really want to read this. I was like, good, because I don't want to read it either. This is actually the second time I have DNF'd this book. So this book has gotten two chances from me and both were bad. So <laughs> this is like a historical fiction mystery paranormal book. I don't even know. It follows this detective who is jailed for some unknown reason. We don't know why. His bodyguard aren't it becomes like the main character of the story and he has to solve this mystery of what's going on with this ship. Um, it's supposedly cursed or something. The biggest problem with this book is there are too many characters. And the chapters like switch between the perspectives of each character but it's not first person. It's like this weird third person omniscient narration but like limited <laughs> to the character that it's focused on. It's very confusing to read. It's a very like hard writing style to get into and with the magical elements, the historical elements, the millions of characters. I just had no idea what was going on in this book and I just didn't really care to. It was very slow and I just was not vibing with it at all. Needless to say, I was happy to DNF it. I think I got about 100 pages in both times. This book is a chunker and I just really don't want to waste my life reading it. So I will most likely never revisit this book. <laughs> now my two one and a half star books, both probably for purposes of enjoyment deserve one star but they weren't like offensive. So I feel like I need to save my like one star for like truly heinous offensive books. These books I just hated. So that's why they got one and a half stars. Um, not sure that makes sense to any brain other than my own. So I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, my second most least favorite book this month was The Searcher by Tana French. <laughs> I talk about this book a lot in my video where I read the top 10 Goodreads thrillers of the year. So definitely go check that video out. I love that video. It's one of my favorites that I've put out this year probably so far. So but I did be hating this book. <laughs> This book is basically about this retired cop who moves to Ireland from Chicago to live out his retirement in peace. But then this kid approaches him and is like, my brother is missing. Will you help me? And he's like, no. But then he's like, I guess. And he starts investigating the disappearance of this kid. This book is very long and it was very boring. It is supposed to be a mystery thriller and it was so dull and slow. And when we finally got the reveal, it was so anticlimactic that I was like, 
I was just over it. I would have DNF'd this book if I hadn't also DNF'd The Devil in the Dark Water, which were, I read both of them for that video. <laughs> So needless to say, I wasted a lot of time on this book for no payoff because it was terrible. So yeah, one and a half stars. <laughs> My other one and a half star read this month was The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I don't know why I hated this book so much. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't really deserve to be hated as much as I hated it, but I just did not enjoy a second of it. This is a romance following these two characters who work at this radio station and they start this podcast where they pretend to be exes. They talk about like love and relationships and stuff on this podcast. Um, and at first they hate each other, but then they start falling for one another and decide they want to be together. There was a couple things I didn't like about this book. For one, it was so predictable and formulaic. Most romances are, but this was formulaic in a way that I just couldn't look past it. It was just like at every turn, it was like, I knew exactly what was going to happen and what was coming. And that just wasn't enjoyable for me to read. Um, I also just didn't like the romance itself. It was so based on physicality and sexual attraction and there was like little to no fluff. I didn't really understand why they liked each other other than they wanted to bang. For me to really like a romance, I need a lot of like fluff <laughs> and being like, oh my God, they're so cute together. I don't like them just banging. Like <laughs> if I wanted that, I would read a different genre of book, I think. So I didn't really get behind the romance and when I wasn't reading for the romance I just was like and so the whole time I was just rolling my eyes whenever they would talk about like how sexually attracted they were to each other I was like okay I know I understand I don't care for you to describe his abs to me again I just simply do not. So I really didn't like that aspect of this book. I also just thought the characters themselves were annoying. Our male love interest was very very pretentious and I just he drove me nuts. He drove me nuts. And <laughs> so did our female main character though. She was very much focused on the age. They were, they had like an age gap. She was older than him by a bit. <laughs> and I didn't like that she kept bringing that up. Made me feel strange. <laughs> The third act conflict was a lot as well and I just don't think that the male love interest did enough to win her back. <laughs> I just simply did not and that's a theme of me a lot in these third act conflicts. I just that makes me hate the man in the situation because it takes very little for me to hate a man so um, when that happens I'm like mm -mm, I'm over it. <laughs> This one got one and a half stars for me. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know why I didn't like it at all, but it will be interesting. I read this for the Sugar and Spice book club hosted by my friends Kristen and Amanda, and it will be interesting to participate in that live show and see um, everybody else's opinions if they can sway me a little bit, but I just really did not enjoy this one at all. All right, now we're jumping up to three star reads, which means that they were pretty good, above average, but not favorites or anything. Uh, but the next book I'm going to talk about is How to Walk Away by Katherine Center. This book is about our main character who gets in this tragic accident alongside our fiance and she is scarred for life, unable to walk, and so she has to rehabilitate her body and her life. Everything She really had everything going for her before the crash. Um, she had this great new job. She was engaged to be married, but everything kind of crumbles around her and she her life is completely flipped upside down and she has to relearn pretty much everything. Her life is just forever changed, but then she meets her physical therapist who is this grumpy man from Scotland and they definitely form a connection. This definitely had a very, very cute romance in it. I really liked our main character and and the love interest together. I thought they worked really well together. I like the like sunshiny grumpy trope and this one sometimes I feel like they go too far and they make the grumpy man like a bully but he wasn't a bully at all <laughs> in this book so I really liked him a lot um, and my favorite character was actually our main character's sister Kit. She was just so fun and bubbly and hilarious and she just brought a much needed lightness to the story and overall I really enjoyed this one but it wasn't something that I feel like is very memorable for me. Um, I felt like it was kind of like while it does deal with with some traumatic things. It was a fluff book to me, you know, like it wasn't a substantial enough story that would like stick with me. It didn't really give me a huge emotional reaction and especially the epilogue was just <laughs> so cheesy. I just kind of like cheapened the rest of it. It was cute but it was it was a lot. Next book I want to talk about is Pride by Ibby Zaboy. This is a YA Pride and Prejudice retelling that takes place in Brooklyn and our main character, Brooklyn, why did I say that? Brooklyn. 
She really loves her hometown, but it is starting to be gentrified, and this new family moves in across the street. They are the Darcy's, they are rich, and they are a Black family, but they very much are participating in the gentrification of the neighborhood, and um, our main character really does not like that, and she doesn't like the boys that move in across the street, even though her sister is falling for one of them. But eventually, because this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, she does fall for the other Darcy boy. <laughs> And this was a really cute, fun read, um, and it also dealt with some pretty good, heavy topics, and I really enjoyed it. It was a really short book. The audiobook was narrated by Elizabeth Acevedo, which I loved. It was a really good audiobook. I would recommend. And overall, this was an above average read, but it wasn't something that blew me away, so I gave it three and a half stars. The next book that I read is for a list video that I'm doing, <laughs> and I don't want to talk about it too much, but um, it was called Take Off Your Running Shoes. <laughs> it is not a real book. <laughs> But I'm counting it because otherwise I would read eight books and I gave this one three and a half stars. But you will have to wait for the list video to find out what it actually is. <laughs> And then next I read The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. This is a YA coming of age story about this black gay teen growing up, finding who he is, finding his voice, finding his purpose. It was a very beautiful story. We follow him from when he was a young kid all the way up to college where he discovers drag and performing and he really enjoys it a lot and wants to be in that world. And he really finds himself and comes into himself as his drag persona. I really loved this book. I loved the inclusion of drag in it because I feel like that's not something that we get a lot books, literature, especially YA, and I thought that was a really fun element. I really liked this book. It definitely was um, very heart-wrenching, but I think it's a very universal book and would appeal to a lot of people, and I really enjoyed it, and it was my first four star of the month. And then my second favorite book of the month was The Humans by Matt Haig. I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed this one. It was a sci-fi kind of comedy story about this alien who comes to Earth, and he takes over the body of this mathematician who has discovered this crazy mathematician mathematical formula that would make humans too smart. So the aliens have to come and eradicate them of the knowledge of this mathematical equation because they don't want humans becoming smart enough to get off their planet. <laughs> But when this alien comes and embodies this human man, he starts to fall for this man's wife and really connect with this man's child and decides that he wants to stay on Earth no matter what kind of havoc that will wreak. So this book is very much like about the human experience and there are quite a few quotes in there that are a little heavy-handed. I feel like that's a theme with Matt Haig. I think sometimes he just like hits the nail on the head a little too hard. <laughs> But overall, I did really enjoy this one. I thought it was hilarious. I laughed out loud quite a bit reading this one and just had a great time overall. It's a very heartwarming story. It definitely made me cry. And it just really reminds you to like live life to the fullest and enjoy the little things in life, <laughs> which is something that we all need to hear every once in a while. So I really enjoyed this one and thought it was a great time. That book was also featured in my vlog where I read all of Haley's favorites this month. That along with The Black Flamingo and the Catherine Center book were all featured. So definitely go check that out if you haven't seen that already. And then my favorite book that I read in February was Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This book is about our main character, Enchanted. Enchanted forms this relationship with this man who is at least 10 years older than her named Corey. He is a very famous musician in the field and he promises that he will help her get famous, but really he just draws her into this abusive, manipulative, horrible, toxic relationship that she has to fight to get away from and that really just scars her for life. Corey also then winds up dead and everybody is pointing fingers at Enchanted and she has to prove her innocence. So there's also like a thriller murder mystery aspect to this story, which I really enjoyed. But ultimately at the end of the day, this book is about trauma and the horrible, horrible things that can happen to girls. And I think it was a very needed and relevant book. It was very difficult to read. I definitely would recommend being in a strong headspace before picking this book up as it is pretty traumatic to read. But the writing style, the pacing, the characterization, everything in this book is done really, really well. Although it's a tough read, I think it's definitely worth it and I would recommend this to everyone. So those are the nine books that I read in February. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down below what the best book you read in February was. Also, don't forget to check out the description for any relevant links. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to be my friend and hang out with me more. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you feel so inclined. And yes, thank you again for being here. I really appreciate you spending your time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.